Hello friends, now in this lecture we will study food quality analysis through hyperspectral imaging. Although this technology of hyperspectral imaging can be analyzed or can be used to analyze various quality attributes of different food materials, but in my this lecture I will focus more towards its use on grain quality analysis particularly infestation etcetera in the grain and that we have done in our work our laboratory. But in fact I will also take up one or two examples of its use in the different food material like meat, fish etcetera uh, from the literature. So, first let us see what this hyperspectral imaging is. In fact, before going to hyperspectral imaging, let us see the imaging. What do, do we mean by imaging system, image or imaging how image is formed. So, in fact, as you can see in this slide, image is the visual representation of an object's form. A spectral imaging is a branch of a spectroscopy in which a complete spectrum or some spectral information is collected at every location on image placed uh, image plane and is it is the information thus collected spectral information is processed. The term hyperspectral imaging comes under the domain of spectral imaging. Hyperspectral images are produced by instruments called imaging spectrophotometers. Spectral images are often represented as an image cube which are a type of data cube. Here you can see in this slide that is the image cubes are shown in the pictures. So, hyperspectral imaging is the combination of spatial and spectral imaging. The hyperspectral imaging includes collecting and processing of information from across the electromagnetic spectrum of the material. In general, the human eyes see visible light in three bands that is the red, green and blue. But here the hyperspectral imaging camera that uh, divides uh, the spectrum into many more bands and these data generated in many more bands from different locations of the material at in different conditions these are processed and finally, represented into some sort of image and that is hypercube you could see in the earlier slide in the picture here also in this slide you can see the hypercube is basically a n dimensional analog of a surface. It may be a square that is where n is equal to 2 or it may be a cube that is n is equal to 3. So, it is hypercube is a n dimensional analog of a square and a cube. It is closed compact convex figure whose one skeleton consists of groups of opposite parallel line segments aligned in each of the spaces dimensions which are perpendicular to each other and are of same length. So, this hypercube you can see here in this picture it shows the volume of data returned by imaging instruments and it illustrate how the data from the imaging instruments get reinforced to reproduce the image. As far as the principle of operation of this hyperspectral imaging technology or hyperspectral imaging system uh, concerns in the latter part of this and maybe in other slide I will show you the different components of the uh, different hyper imaging system, but 
it uh, here there are some sensors. So, obviously, the sensors hyperspectral sensors collect information as a set of images. These images are then combined and formed into a three dimensional hyperspectral data cube for processing and analysis and it provides actually a unique spectral signature for every pixel which can be used by processing techniques to identify and discriminate material. So, here that is you can see there are the different lenses the image is acquired by the camera that is uh, and then it is passed through different lenses and finally, this data collected is uh, signals collected etcetera they are processed and finally, converted into hyperspectral cubes which are further analyzed. So, this the hyperspectral imaging equipment consists basically you can see here this is actual photograph of the hyperspectral imaging system which we have in our laboratory. So, which has a schematic of this system is that it contains a camera that is the camera for taking the image which is collected here that is hyperspectral image in camera and then some lighting assembly lights are provided for illumination of the sample which is kept here. So, this sample the camera takes the image and it, it takes the data and then it is passed to the computer where there is the different particular software depending upon the type of the material to be analyzed and characteristics of the material in the to a later part of this lecture I will tell you what are the different softwares available. So, that is used to analyze the data and compare the result. So, this is the principle of operation how spectral imaging equipment works and what are the different components present in the HS equipment. So, as you have seen in the earlier is that is the light source obviously, I told you it illuminates the sample white light can be used for NIR and visible data collection and a specific wavelength can be selected by using appropriate filters which are provided there in the instrument. Imaging optics collects sample reflectance and illuminates illumination wavelengths and there are filters provided may be tunable filters etcetera allows only a specific wavelength corresponding to a particular image to be captured by the camera and finally, imaging charge coupled device that is CCD which is called it records intensities of individual pixels for which wavelength is the there in the data collection range. So, this is how it collects data sends the signal and processes it and in this the, it is the schematic representation of almost there that there may be different types of uh, image acquisition techniques like point scan where whisker broom configuration system is there which uses an inferometer in the other case it is a line scan push broom configuration there are dispersing filters and you can see that from the light source how this sample uh, image is coming and then data is sent to the dispersing filters and finally, it comes in the form of cubes and then in other case uh, that is the even plain scan system which is that is training imager configuration. So, this uh, there are different uh, image acquisition techniques depending upon what are the features specific features available in the equipment available with you one can use appropriate techniques for uh, acquiring the image and finally, its processing. So, once the image is acquired or hyperspectral data then it is processed its processing means grouping these pixel vectors with similar spectral characteristics in classes. So, that is one and then detecting pixel vectors whose spectral characteristics are similar to the one of known material. So, in that way the data is grouped and finally, analyzed. So, this in fact uh, hyperspectral processing image processing data it is very very important in nowadays it uh, abundance of the data in hyperspectral imagery leads to 
increased processing accuracy hyperspectral sensors are used in aircrafts satellites etc and they are now produced commercially like soc 700 which indicates that these production indicates that large data availability we are using that is the, this technology in the near future it has a good scope so it can be used for processing of the full image cube in uh, that is the processing of the full image cube is uh, not desirable due to its size as well as its redundancy as you can see here in this picture there is the feature extraction the this process this is the process of projecting the data from the original feature space to a lower dimension subspace that provides a more effective representation you can see that is the original data so there are the data points these features are sent to the uh, new space which has a reduced that is the data reduced. The efficiency of the representation is viewed through the separation between the classes within each figure that is the, the pixels which have the similar characteristics they are grouped by the software. They may be, they were may be supervised feature extraction which uses information provided by subset of pixel vectors that is the ground data and the classes are considered to be represented by the ground data and ground data may be unreliable or impossible to obtain. In the case of unsupervised feature extraction, no ground data is used, it concentrates mainly on the redundancy uh, reduction and class statistics cannot be computed or estimated. So, this are the steps of the HSI analysis that is hyperspectral image analysis that is the sample is uh, as it is can be used there is no preparation of the sample except is normally required. So, the sample it is kept on the sample uh, image collecting platform and then image is uh, acquired by hyperspectral imaging camera and then after the image is acquired it need to be calibrated and the calibration may be for the wavelength for spatial arrangements, spatial calibration, curvature calibration and reflectance calibration. So, system is to be calibrated or a particular wavelength, a particular spatial configuration in which image to be acquired all these things are adjusted in the equipment and then accordingly the calibrated hyperspectral image that is which may be the wavelength selection image at a selected wavelength is obtained or dimensionality reduction that is uh, dimensionally reduced data are generated or ROI selection that is spectral extraction or textural extraction that is averaged spectra from ROI or extracted texture from ROI these are generated. Finally, this is these all these data is sent to the computer for where using different softwares either by multivariate analysis etcetera is performed and the calibrated model it gives the different uh, images or chemical images etcetera classified and grouped images are obtained and which are finally compared with this uh, known. So, that the how the uh, hyperspectral images are analyzed by the software or by the computers. So, the general approach for the analysis of the hyperspectral image is that in this it develops a spectral library that is a spectral library or sets of hundreds of measured spectra for components likely to be encountered in the study area. So, these uh, spectral curves are constructed for relatively pure materials, specific reflectance peaks and absorption troughs are read from these curves and then 
they are compared to the lab spectra that is by mixture analysis is done and mixture of two or even three different materials can be identified as the components of the compound spectral curves. The chemometrics applied for HSI analysis like classification, grouping etcetera the software different uh, chemometrics are uh, data analysis techniques are available like principal component analysis, individual component analysis, k mean cluster analysis, genetic algorithm, support vector machines or partial least square discrimination analysis. So, different uh, methods now one has to see that is which is the most appropriate method uh, to be used for the uh, analysis of the image depending upon the requirements and what is the type of the image or what is the image etcetera. So, accordingly. So, after this what is even the some regression analysis like partial least square regression, artificial neural network or support vector machine systems etcetera can be used for analyzing the data. Different uh, softwares which are available or which are used for hyperspectral image analysis that is open source software include uh, HyperSpy or uh, Gerbil software that is which is used for hyperspectral visualization and analysis purposes. Then some commercial software that is Eridas, ENVI, MIA, Micro MSI, MATLAB, hyperspectral toolbox, other hyperspectral tools in MATLABs are also available mountains map hyperspectral which is a version of mountains map dedicated to the analysis of hyperspectral data in microscopy, optics, uh, sky layers all these are the softwares uh, that is the commercial software available which can be used for the processing or analysis of the data. So, as far as the application of the hyperspectral imaging in food processing is concerned, it can be applied in various sectors like it can be used for analysis of the food quality like finding foreign matters such as plastic pieces, insects etcetera in the food materials and in the products. It can be analyzed for uh, it can be used for analyzing particular quality or particular component of the food like concentration of sugar homogeneity of different mixtures or it can be used for controlling different production stages like the material characteristics before baking or after baking or after mixing of the different. So, all this thing that is the images can of the materials can be taken at various stages and then the data can be analyzed to uh, assess the quality of the particular material at the particular stage. Similarly, in the food packaging industry this uh, HSI can be used for uh, ensuring or for analyzing the seal or for inspecting the seal or whether this packet is contaminated etcetera or uh, the product uniformity that is uh, quality assurance through packaging material that is packaging material whether it is in fact etcetera even hyperspectral imaging camera etcetera is can be used for judging the cleaning efficiency and the equipments and so on or it can be used it has a good application or potential application in use of the food sorting or in developing automated food sorting machines food sorting or grading systems like grains, seeds, dried fruits etcetera that is immature grains, infested grains or different sizes of fruits etcetera or if the fruit is some it has got some uh, damage and bruise etcetera all those things they can be uh, sorted or graded using this hyperspectral imaging technology even fruits, vegetable, meats, grains they all can be. So, this is in fact as various researchers they have worked all right like uh, Lee et al in 2011 they have uh, reported a system for the detection of defects in food that is they using hyperspectral imaging techniques they have detected the different image that is uh, even in uh, Jarlo Masid et al's 
also they have uh, reported or take uh, on the basis of the images taken of the different fruits and different conditions they have analyzed that is whether is there any defect in a particular fruit. So, development of this uh, an automated Bruce detection system will help the food industry to provide a better fruit for the consumers and also to reduce potential economic losses uh, because otherwise if that uh, spoiled food is sent to the industry it may result into the loss. Similarly, that uh, some researchers they have uh, used this technology for detection of defects in meat. You can see here in this picture this size that is a uh, Barbin et al in 2013. They have by taking images of the different uh, meats uh, like in the minced meat, then cured meat young et al 2017 and pork meat that is Cheng et al in 2016. They have indicated that is the protein content, the images, moisture, fat and this biogenic amine index or total volatile basic nitrogen index. So, they have analyzed these components in the different meat samples through they have taken the image and with the image of this pixels etcetera, they have grouped or classified that which one is spoiled and which is like the here in another study some researchers they indicated that the fish freshness that is the classification of the fish are their freshness. So, the pixels in the red are considered that is the, the, the those pixels are not fish. So, more red image means that is the that pixel fish is not fresh. So, this has the potential effect. Similarly, that is a use of hyperspectral imaging in green quality analysis some researchers have reported like this is the hyperspectral imaging cubes showing wheat kernels you can see here different images of different wheat kernels right and this is a data given reported by caprosi et al in 2018 then manley et al in 2014 they detected the quality of uh, yellow maize kernels right that is the in picture a it is the pca score images of whole yellow maize kernels enabling visualization of similarity in chemical composition that is the similar color indicate similar composition of the endosperm texture this uh, in second picture B, it is the score plot of PC2 versus PC5 with three clusters you can see clearly. The here picture C, it is the classification plot based on cluster identified in PC score plot and finally, that D, the classification image after projection of the classes identified in the score plot onto the score images. So, in this way that is the quality green quality analysis etcetera is used. In our laboratory that is the Misra et al 2018 we have published this result also we have as I told you we have conducted that is the we have detected uh, infestation level we have conducted experiment to find out the level of infestation in stored wheat grain. So, here what we have, we have taken wheat fresh wheat sample and it was a condition to different moisture level by adding calculated amount of water to make the moisture content in grain to 10, 12, 14 and 16 percentage wet basis and these grains were uh, allow, uh, inoculated with known number of insects of different life stages of insect and these were stored at 65 percent relative humidity and 27 degree Celsius temperature means that is all this exercise was done to get the infested wheat samples that is the wheat sample which have there is a known level or quantum of infestations 
So, in the second once we had the infested heat sample and various combinations and permutations have been done. So, heat samples having different level of infestations having uh, containing different uh, uh, infestation stages of the insect etcetera they were used. Now, they were uh, images of these samples were acquired using hyperspectral imaging camera that we have in our laboratory. You can see here these are the false color image of the hypercube of the infested grain and then with the help of the chemometric software these uh, spectra were uh, spectral were analyzed and finally, the different uh, principal cl cluster analysis was done. This. So, this you can see the images that is effect of moisture content and the degree of infestation which is our report. In fact, the, these are the images of the fresh grain at 10, 12, 14 and this is 16 moisture content that is on wet basis. So, you can see that images now the infested grain. So, you can note clearly visible that is the difference between the fresh grain of 10 percent moisture content and you can see the image of the infested grain of uh, that is after 180 days that is at 10 percent moisture content. So, it in all the cases of the 10, 12, 14 or 16 all percent moisture content the by image one can clearly that is it is visible and these two pictures in the bottom they show the PCA score plot of the fresh grain can say principal component in the plot and this PCA score plot of the infested grain at uh, up, uh, 180 days of storage. So, there are clear cut differences and one can very clearly see that yes the by the observing by comparing the spectra of the fresh image as well as the infested the level of infestation and quantum of infestation can be analyzed can be found out. So, this hyperspectral imaging technology it is way, has a vast potential for application in food processing industries it has a many advantages the primary advantage that because an entire spectrum is acquired at each point the operator needs no prior knowledge of the sample even a person who does not have the technical knowledge of the sample can do this can uh, take the image the analyze the data and the post processing allows all available information from the data set to be mined. Hyperspectral imaging can also take advantage of the spatial relationships among the different spectra in a neighborhood, allowing more elaborate spectral spatial models for a more accurate segmentation and classification of the image. However, now it is an advantageous technology, very good technology, but at the same time like every other methods here hyperspectral imaging process also had has certain drawbacks like number one the most important is it is a costly process and it is little bit complex particularly this analysis of the data image taking anyone can take the image, but to analyze the image to process the image use of the appropriate software all these things needs uh, some skill technical competence. The computers very fast computers even very sensitive detectors and large data storage capacities are needed for analyzing the images or hyperspectral data and also one of the hurdles researchers have had to face is finding ways to program hyperspectral uh, satellites to sort through data on their own and transmit only the most important images as both transmission and storage of the data may that many data could prove difficult and costly. 
So, if such systems are available, sub analysis etc., is available, which, which can sort or that is take only the required images or required data, and if that is transmitted, the system is able to transmit that only required data, etc., that may be a good thing. So, present these are the some of the uh, drawbacks of this technology. But let me tell you that this hyperspectral imaging it, it, technology it is a emerging area in food processing, food quality analysis and it has a great potential of its application and the data generated by the system can be relied upon and this will give a good very good method. This will form a very good method of quality analysis or the most important thing that is the it is a non destructive method and once the process is standardized and library is created, then it can be done more frequently and more routine manner. Okay. This I thank you very much.